Not happy single, you won't be happy married. Happiness comes from cats. Doing self care, <laughs> she don't need your dick. Baby got her own daily bread, she don't need your plank. Come here, standing ten toes down, she don't need your fake. Oh, she holy, huh? <laughs> but you knew that. I like the way she stepped for God, like how you do that? I know her exes still be mad, like how you blew that? <laughs> Baby planting seeds on solid ground, like how you grew that? Go put a ring on her finger, cause she wifey. They holy from Detroit to California, going hyphy. Chasing after dudes without no God, it's so unlikely. She got that holy fire, she be stepping, talking spicy. Baby step for God. No, she blessed, ain't she? Huh. Baby sanctified, no, she blessed, ain't she? Huh. Baby, this your time, no, she blessed, ain't she? Huh. Baby, she gon' shine, no, she blessed, ain't she? Huh. talk about what I know but this is the first time I'm putting my real life in it like it's, it's no secret mm -hmm. um I have I've been married for nine years and it's just it just didn't work out you know it's like again like what I was saying I don't have time for drama I don't have time for nonsense this is one of the most amazing times in my life and if you can't celebrate that with me I'm so sorry I'm gonna have to <laughs> leave you behind like right. I, I cannot right. I gotta you know what i'm here. saying this is where we depart like you wake up every day mad there's literally nothing to be upset about yeah mm -hmm. like we have we have a beautiful child we're good like we you know we might owe some bills and but that's everybody has that everyone you yeah. know what yeah. i'm saying it's yeah. like, <laughs> everything my wife? is good we there's a few like, things wrong on this side <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and i think also too like i don't i think it takes incredible strength to to realize like this this was the love of my life at one point mm -hmm. and he probably could be really good for me if he got it together but i'm not willing to put my life and my passion and my mm -hmm. happiness on hold for you to catch up whoa unfortunately you might get it in a year but you know sorry i yeah. probably already I'm well you know it. with yeah. men we, we take a little longer maturing <laughs> So I you know, I think what what a more powerful lesson for you to learn. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> having having you know, have you ever heard of the story Acres of Diamonds? Yeah. Yeah, like you yes. you have acres of diamonds underneath your feet and you sold it to go and look for something else. Yeah. And then somebody else came and they enjoyed the land that you didn't appreciate. Yeah, the this is the first ever quarterback that could also be a world champion boxer. <laughs> His name is Davi Belfort. He's a four-star quarterback that signed with Virginia Tech. And his dad was one of the greatest MMA fighters of all time. And this kid has a fighter mentality. He's used to getting hit. And watch him sacrifice his body for the touchdown. There is not a quarterback out there that is crazy enough to do live sparring sessions. His off-season training is literally a mix between football and boxing. Game's on the line. Let's go. Four quarter against Miami. He had 72 touchdowns and 7,600 yards. He's the first ever Brazilian to receive a Power 5 football scholarship. And I want to know in the comments, do you think Davi's boxing abilities will help him become a great quarterback? Learning to stay calm when you feel disrespected is a different type of growth. You're on a whole nother level right there. A lot of people get angry. A lot of people get in their feelings and emotions when they get disrespected. They yelling out of anger. 
no control of the conversation because they just in their feelings. But if you calm and relax and you getting your point across, you're on a different type of growth. You're on a different type of level. Yeah, man. Best level to be at. That'll let that individual know you don't got control of my emotions. I remain calm through whatever you think you can put me through. Yeah, I'm relaxed. And when you relax, you'll get a whole lot more out of a person that way too. They'll seem to just relax too. And if they keep going with that nonsense, I ain't nothing else to discuss. I'm finna walk away. Yeah, man. So continue to be in your peaceful state of mind when you're dealing with people that's trying to put you over the top, get you out your anger, get you into that emotional state of mind. Just remain calm and you'll get more out of life. Facts. I appreciate everybody that got this for my message. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Ideas are physical. And uh, if you have visions and ideas and it's so clear and it's so specific and you decide to rob the world of getting that idea out, it ain't gonna be sitting on the table. Right. We should go the rest of our life getting that book out, writing that script, moving on those visions and ideas implementing all that God has bounced in. What, what's keeping you up at night? And if you think you're going to be able to talk to your friends, your broke ass family, and they're going to share in that same joy and energy that you have about what you see and what you want and what you envision for your life, you're going to be up for the rest of your life just like them. Wow. Y'all don't see what I see with what God is doing and about to do, but I'm going to show you one day. Because if I talk to you about my visions and my dreams, you're going to laugh at me. You're going to try and talk me out of it. And if you talk me out of it, then I can't come back to that same hood and change the hood. Can I tell you something beautiful? Yeah. Um, a guy in a mosque once told me. When I was sitting, I was complaining to him about why are people bad? Like, I don't understand. How do people sleep at night? How do they do that? How do they do this? So he, he said... Why do you look at things like that? I was like, so how should I look at things other than I've been screwed over by people all the time and I'm the good person and I feel like good people don't finish, you know, they finish last always. He's like, no, no, no. Think of it in this way. You have been an answer to these people's prayer. Maybe that person needed love, needed kindness, needed care, and God like gave them their prayer through you. Maybe that person needed money. Her, My partner did steal the money because her father was sick, but you didn't have to butcher me and steal the money and all that. And maybe you were an answer to her prayer so you are always part of a process part of a story part of a transformation we are all vessels and he's like you were you know if, if they took the love from you they took the time from you let them keep it they needed it they needed it and he's like you were part of their prayer god answered their prayer through you and you learned a lot through it just don't have the capacity to like argue with people or get my lick back or any of that like life is going to do that to you karma is going to do that to you god is going to get you and all i have to do is keep being successful sure you know because people who do like horrible things to people they already miserable on the inside 100 yeah. percent. i don't have the capacity life is too short if it's not adding to me bringing me light joy baby well, I, i'm not about to argue with you they and then also to too it. it's like how much more powerful is it to sit in front of someone and smile and still love them mm -hmm. um, from your high place and knowing on the inside, you know, it's just burning them up. Like, how, how she get that? That's way more powerful than like a aha, I told you so. You feel it. This for all the women out there with so much on their plate. Putting up with drama, but it never show on your face. Out here working double time, you don't get help like you should. But you do miracles to keep your family healthy and good. Some days you get emotional, I know it's lonely at times. But if you snap and go crazy, you gon' be doing jail time. People throwing shade, but you don't forget who you are. Cause you remember, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Who that's hard? Nobody was around, but you held it down. Don't forget to treat yourself, queen, wear your crown. Every day, look yourself in the mirror and know your worth. Rejoice at your reflection, cause you the salt of the earth. You in church, and it feel like the pastor talking to you. The world trying to pull you down, but God keep pulling you through. This ain't one of them songs where we disrespect you. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. This time we love and protect you. Huh? Do me a favor, don't lie to me. 
That's it. That's all. Don't lie to me. Understand that. Don't lie to me to try to protect my feelings. Don't lie to me to try to keep from hurting me. Don't lie to me to try to make me not feel what I'm going to feel. Don't lie to me. That's all that I ask. Why? Because I'm not one of them. And by not being one of them, I want you to understand that I know that your lies, your lies is not to protect me. Your lies is not to keep me from hurting. Your lies is not to make me not feel what the pain that I'm going to feel. Your lies is to protect you. And I will not allow you to lie to me, hurt me, damage me, and then lie to me as if what you were lying about, you were lying about it to protect me. No, my li your lies are to protect you. Ain't got nothing to do with me. Your lies is to prevent you from taking a loss that you're afraid to lose. Of, of having to watch me walk out on you. To have to watch me disconnect from you. That, that, that's what your lies is protecting. Don't lie to me. I'm not one of them. Your lies are for you. I know your lies are not for me. I think I need you. I don't think so. I think you need me. And if you don't want me around anymore, we'll see who needs who. I don't give a fuck anymore. Mm. I'm not afraid of it. Because I've had plenty. And now, it's just time for me to say I'm tough. Because what does not kill you makes you stronger. The moment that you show people that you're not willing to fight, they want to fight. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I don't yeah. give a shit what anybody says or what anybody thinks. I have this mindset. I know exactly who the fuck I am. I have my circle of people that I hang around with who know me and know what I'm about and whatever. Anybody else who doesn't like it or doesn't want to, bad. Flip the perspective to one where you're thankful for that. Because eventually you'll become so successful, you won't have people doubting you anymore. You won't have people criticizing you like that. You won't have people that don't believe, and you won't have that fuel, and you wish you did. God will test you with suffering. God will test you with challenges. God will test you with difficulties. God will test you with hard times. But that is when the proof of your faith is manifested. Not when everything is given to you. Not when it's easy. Not when times are simple. But in the challenges. Do you curse God or do you bless Him for giving you the opportunity to experience these, experience these challenges and experiencing difficulties to become better and to get closer to Him? Don't break a bird's wings and then tell it to fly. Don't break a heart and then tell it to love. Don't break a soul and then tell it to be happy. Don't see the worst in a person and expect them to see the best in you. Don't judge people and expect them to stand by your side. Don't play with fire and expect to stay perfectly safe. Life is about giving and taking. You cannot expect to give bad and receive good. You cannot expect to give good and receive bad. People have to try to paint a bad picture of you so they can try to feel better about them. So they got to try to come up with some narrative in their mind to try to justify the reason that they're treating you a certain way because if they really reflect on how you really did treat them, then you will put hot coals on their head because when you do good to people who do evil to you, it hurts them. So they try to make it seem like you are so bad to them so that they can feel good about, okay. So could it be you have joy robbers? People that are drinking all of your joy and then act victims to crimes they committed. They're acting like they're bleeding when they stabbed you. I changed my mentality. I don't think the same way I was when I was there. I opened my mind up. I thought broader. I thought outside of my horizons. Like, you got to think outside the box mm -hmm. because that's the only way you're going to get out. When you're trapped in the trap, you really mentally trapped in the trap. And it's me, me like, man, I want to make sure my people just know that that's just not the end of your life. If you settle in life, regret is coming for you at some point. And especially in a relationship, you'll end up going from pretend soulmates to roommates. And you're just existing at that point. And it all started from you ignoring with your intuition, with your soul, as I like to say, listen to your soul. Your soul is telling you that this ain't right. Your soul is telling you that you deserve better, that you deserve more. But your, but your mind, right? The external things, the comparison, what are people gonna say if I leave this? If we start something different, what are, what are people going to say if I if I have this divorce and I'm not advocating divorce, but if I break up with this situation, what are people going to say? And so I'm going to stay in this and suffer. And at some point you get to 40, 50, 60, 10 years, five years, and you realize you wasted five years of your life on the wrong person. Not because you found out they were the wrong person, but because you knew at the beginning they were the wrong person. But they were just right for your loneliness. They were right for your insecurities at the time and they were right for your temptations. And so you have to leave, be willing to say, 
I'm willing to go alone if it isn't right. And if you can't have that mindset, you're eventually going to run into regret. And I think regret is the greatest poison to the soul. Every time you got an assignment, there's an assassin. You're so gifted that everywhere you go, you're always going to have an enemy. If they can't kill you, they kill your help. How do they try to stop groups one through seven? With an army. Because it's hard to fight while you're working. That's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to make a decision. Are you going to keep working or are you going to fight? Because if you fight, you can't work. And if you work, you can't fight. So you got to make a decision. Are you going to rebuild or are you going to defend yourself? Man, you can't tell me nothing today, bro. I'm alive, baby. Thank you, God, for waking me up another day. Hey, if you woke up today, remember that you're blessed. A lot of people didn't get to wake up today. But God woke you up. Whatever problems you have, brush them off, man. Put a smile on your face. We get another opportunity. We got the gift of life. We're way too blessed to be stressed. Let's go out there and have a great day, y'all. Let's go. Just don't understand it's how y'all just give any and everybody access to you. You think just because a person look good, they smell good, they drive something nice or whatnot, that you're supposed to go over there and connect yourself to them. I want you to understand that it's some very beautiful disasters out here. Hello, somebody. What you say, coach? I say there's some beautiful disasters. They know, yeah, yeah, the representation look real good, but the inside of these folks is real nasty. Understand that they got trauma. They got drama. They got issues. They got generational curses. They got extra bad baggage and all type of other stuff that come along with them y'all can't just be out here giving you to everybody everybody don't deserve you everybody don't deserve your love everybody don't deserve your attention everybody don't deserve to be swinging their feet up under your table everybody shouldn't be laid off in your bed you gotta become very particular about who you share space with who you interact with baby y'all real passionate about everything but yourself real protective about everything but yourself baby yeah you better start Start checking these folks out man listen I, I can't lay with everybody i can't be with everybody i can't kick it with everybody everybody just ain't for me Relationships, everything bro like yeah people think money everything but it's really the relationships you want relationship because you can have all this money or you could be this type of person and the the person that's like right here like you could be right here the person that's right here can get opportunities because they got the relationships with these people like they I, they just more likable <laughs> you feel like bro i'm supposed to have it i'm here, I got this on this person. No, you don't. You don't. You're not likable. Women don't really believe in men no more, bro. Cause most dudes, y'all not trying to buy no house. You feel me? Y'all ain't trying to link up with no woman and build a good life with her. Everybody just want to come around somebody and try to use them for stuff. I ain't let nobody use me for nothing. Even if it's my energy, I'm not letting nobody use my energy. I'm not letting nobody crowd my space. Like you dudes be chasing women all day. Get your life together, bro. Women gon' do what they wanna do, especially if they make their own money, bro. They don't care about what you talking about. Women don't want no bugaboo type man. Women want somebody that's strong, bro. Somebody that's focused, bro. A real smart woman don't want no man sitting around not motivated to do nothing, driving her car everywhere, laying under her all day, not helping her reach her goals. Women don't want that. You feel me? A lot of people in this world ain't even trying to build. A lot of people just wanna come in your life so they can destroy you. So they can take you down. They want to use you for the things that you accomplish. People are going to believe what they're going to believe. But I am a good person. Not a nice one. It takes character to stand up for yourself. And if that makes me not nice, well, there you have it, folks. I'm not nice. But don't believe the con that when people disrespect you, you have to be nice to them. People know what they're doing. And people saying you have to be nice in return. If you had good character, you'd be nice back. Two wrongs don't make a right. Me being nice back, that makes me a doormat. I wasn't born last night. I don't have to be nice to you. I don't have to be nice to anyone. Sorry you don't feel like you're getting the better end of the deal anymore. Like, sorry I even the playing field? Sorry I'm not compliant and easy to manipulate? Like, I get it, that's super upsetting for you. And people will say stuff after that, like, ooh, she's rude, ooh, she's abrasive, but conveniently exclude the context that made it appropriate. People love to leave out the part where they were a fucking weirdo. And I want you to know that there's no amount of people pleasing that will make people stop making you uncomfortable. That's part of the con. Because these people would need to deem your comfort as valuable, which people pleasing will not do. But it will make you seem like a good sport. What some people do is they use mean as a catch-all for somebody that has a boundary. It's not really that you're mean, it's that you're vocal about your discomfort, your boundary, a problem. They'll call you mean. But people are going to believe what they want to believe. A lot of them are delusional. So go find people that don't find it mean. Find people that respect that about you. Stand up for yourself because that's what the little kid in you deserves.
I stop taking anything people do or say personally, yeah. because I know that's their internal battle. That's their unsolved trauma. That's their experience. That's not me. So I understand that I'm not going to be loved by everybody. I don't have to be loved by everybody. And that was a big challenge for me because when I was younger, I just wanted to do everything to be loved and accepted. Right. Mm. By everyone and everyone. Now I don't care. Like, it's like, that's how you process things. That's how you think of things. That's not, that's not on me. I'm just going to be me, authentically me. And if I'm your cup of tea, great. How is God supposed to move in your life if you're not moving? One of the biggest things that I learned recently is taking bold steps of faith. You know, when you quiet yourself down, right, and you, you remove all the distractions, you mo remove all the busyness, and you actually listen for a second to try to hear God speak to you, He'll actually tell you to do something. He'll tell you to, to execute on something or to move a certain direction or to stop doing something. And when you listen to that, when you're obedient to that, that is where God moves, even if it feels crazy. I know some of the craziest and biggest breakthroughs I personally had came right after me doing something that was actually really scary. For instance, I just got done sponsoring an event that I was led and I was told by one of my mentors. He pulled me aside and he said, hey, I know you're under a lot of financial stress right now, Dylan, but if you do this, if you, if you sponsor this event and you move with bold faith, God is going to open the floodgates in your business. And I was really stressed out. I prayed about it. I asked people and ultimately it was my decision. And after I decided to sponsor the event and I moved my money financially with faith, I had my, not even 24 hours later, guys, I had the biggest explosion of my business. And I, I can't even make this up. Like this is just how God works. Sometimes he's going to test us in the areas where we trust him the least. And for me, just very vulnerably, it was money. It was trusting God with my finances. I already knew God was my, you know, security. I already knew that God was, you know, all these things, my father in heaven, but I did not trust him fully as my provider. You know, I was spending all this money and I felt like I didn't have any left over to give. But God is looking for our, our faith and he's looking to see where he can move in us. And when you're obedient, he's gonna open the floodgates every single time. Don't go for that relationship. Mm -mm. Do not go for that female. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's just the devil trying to make you feel lonely, make you feel like you need somebody. He's just trying to take you off course. He's trying to take you out the kingdom. It's not worth it. I just went through that. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Nope. If they don't have Jesus in the heart, nope. Nope. Because guess what? When stuff hits the fan, who are you going to go to? Your heavenly father. Who are they going to go to, though? They're going to go to their friends, gossip about you. They're going to go to the world. They're going to go to clubs, raves. They're going to go to other people, other people of the same gender as you. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Your eternity is on the line. You can't get caught up in that. Be patient. Just be patient. Wait for the Lord to send you somebody. He's got somebody for you who you're not going to have to compromise with. Because this is the thing. It's right now you're having a self-worth issue. So you're putting up with stuff that you don't need why would God want you to be with somebody who you're going to have to worry if they're out drinking or out smoking or out talking to other guys or out talking to other girls? Why would God want that for his son or why would God want that for his daughter? Ah, man, wait for the right person. Wait for someone who fears the Lord. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord, man, praise be to her. That's really what it is. It's good. I know you're single. You're feeling a little lonely. The Holy Spirit's right there with you. Talk to him about it. Let him know, Lord, I got a problem being alone right now. I got a problem with, my, with how I look at myself, with, with self-worth. Lord, help me. And he's there. He's near you. Don't run to the world. Don't run to a worldly female. Don't run to a worldly male. Because they don't have a kingdom mindset. They don't have the mindset of eternity like you do nah they just have the mindset of now mindset of what can i do on this earth you don't deserve that brother my sisters you do not deserve that he claims he's a man of god okay where is his fruit you know what i mean like it's so easy to say i'm a christian oh yeah i grew up christian okay cool why are you at the club friday night then why are you at these rays why why are you doing these things you don't know jesus you don't know jesus Stay away from them. It's okay. If God calls you to plant the seed, 
plant the seed and that's it. Dip. Don't get your emotions involved like I did. Try to stay around, water it, harvest it, because guess what? Eventually your emotions are gonna get in it and then you're gonna be thinking, I could save her. I could save her. Or ladies, even worse, you're gonna be thinking, oh, I could save him. I could save him. No, you cannot. Only the Lord can. Only the Lord can. Don't go in that. Don't don't go for that. Stay away if you're thinking about it. But th that's why the Holy Spirit is not only putting this video up on your phone, but that's why He be giving you these little red flags. Take 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 the take the hint. Oh my gosh, I ignored all my hints, and I got I got busted up, and it's my own fault. I can't even blame over. It's my fault. Take the hint, please take the hint. Oh, it's not worth it, cause you can't you can't afford to give the devil territory. You cannot. You have too much on the line. You have your eternity on your line. You have the, the family, uh, your family's eternity on the line. It's not worth it, brother. It's not worth it, sister. Y'all stay strong. God's going to lead you to a God-fearing woman. God's going to lead you to a God-fearing man. Seek his kingdom first, and the rest shall be added. Did you come to know Christ? Well, hell, I was kissing hell. I was making love to hell. I was adopted by hell. I was going through hell at the height of everything. I was winning Super Bowls, playing the World Series, doing my thing, but had no peace, no joy. Didn't feel like no one loved me but my kids. The only thing that I felt like was real and authentic and loved me because they the only one who knew me. You could sleep in the bed with two and three women and nobody's satisfied. You got a hundred suits, you can't cover up the pain. You've got a three, four, five hundred pairs of shoes, you can't take a step in the right direction. You got nine to ten cars in the driveway, you ain't going nowhere. You got a 15,000 square foot house, but you ain't got a home. By the time you get to the bottom because God is calling you collect and you do not want to accept the charges because you know it's going to cost you something. I've trusted man, I've trusted woman, I've trusted child, I've trusted people, places, and things. And every last one of them have somehow, some way or another let me down. But not Jesus. But not Jesus. Not one day, not one time, not one moment. My mindset is there's nothing in this life that Russell can't do. I live like I retire early. This ain't luck like Andrew. My mom has an ass and at her villa is cyan blue. Keep on moving forward like Wayne Rooney did on man. Yeah, and about Billy Joe's had it on me. Used to wear N1 and Abercrombie. Universe listening. I was super sure of what I was saying. I used to watch Dragon Ball Z. I just want peace and serenity. But my own brain isn't letting me. Stop talking to me about NFTs. I don't have to bend with the energy. I gotta get up and get it. I can't be down on my luck. Shit could be worse. I could be you. And I would really be fucked. I would strip you of everything that you have to build a relationship with God. And I'm going to say it again, is God is within you. So when you lose everything in your life and you're going through trials and tribulations and you might lose your car or your house or lose a relationship or whatever, right? And be lonely. That's your opportunity to strengthen your relationship with God, which is in you, which is by yourself. That's how you learn who you are. One of the big things that I was doing wrong was like I was over communicating interest. I would have problems with the girls that I was like, oh damn, like this girl's hot, you know, she's different or like, you know, or I really like her or whatever. And my approach would change. And because my approach would change, my results would change. I would say change your default setting from nice to challenging. Because like a lot of these guys, like they aren't really nice guys. They're like, oh, like, you know, you're not that nice to the fat chick. You're not that nice to the janitor. You're nice to this girl because you want to, you know, so like this whole idea of like, oh, I'm just being myself or like, that's another one. It's like, I just want to be myself. Like, I want her to like me for me. And it's like, okay, well, there's different versions of you. There's a version of you in an Armani suit. There's a version of you dressed like, shit. you know, there's a version of you where you like take care of your diet and work out and like, you know, work at your job. There's a version of you that just like succumbs to every one of your you know impulses. Like, you know, like you can make yourself better. And I think, you know, a lot of guys don't do that. Like a lot of guys are just like, I want a girl to like me for me. Got a heart, but fuck it, I'm paid. Well, it be the body, you fresh out the cage. I'm so the same. The minimum wage, they trying to keep up, so they stalk him. Hey, yo, the most dangerous motherfucker to be with is somebody who doesn't want to love you, but also doesn't want to lose your ass. That person is dangerous, and uh, they only like the convenience of you and what you can offer them, you know? So you have to understand that and reevaluate your situation, that they are using you for financial, emotional support, you know, probably a living situation, but at the end of the day, they'll never give you what you're worth or give you what you deserve, you know? 
They'll never give you that relationship, that marriage, that proposal, anything like that is not happening, right? But they also don't want to lose you because they also know what you're worth and your value. But you got to know that shit. Fact is, is you have to have confidence in yourself because confidence breeds success and success breeds confidence. Without confidence, you're nothing. But confidence applied properly, you supersede a genius. Life is all about confidence. Right, you need to be confident in yourself because if you're not confident in yourself, no one will be confident in you. And not only that, but confidence is something that you have to find from within. It's not something that you can learn. Confidence is learned. You have to go through the, um, the primaries of confidence. You have to test yourself. You have to do what you're totally afraid of and challenge it. Thank you, well thank you for teaching me that. Be a man if you ain't working out and exercising. Are you thinking you got a new Tesla truck that means something? You got an AP on your wrist that means something? When somebody slap you in your face, you can't protect yourself. Fat boy. And you tell me that inside you is not infinite. You can't show me a limitation. The limitation only exists when you decide to create a room in your mind that has an ending. But then you can decide to tear down those walls. When you think from a cosmic plane, then you can plan out. It's black on black, man. It's Vance of Black Year, man. We gotta be the blackest. Cosmic blackness. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Okay, keep acting like I'm not here, boy. I know it was you. That's why you're in timeout. You're gonna stay there. Till you say sorry. He's in timeout. What happened? He chewed up my mic. <gasps> Was that the new one or the old one? The new one. You know what you did, boy. Your mama ain't gonna save you. No, I'm not gonna save you. That's actually crazy. <laughs> you gotta understand. That there's consequences for your bad actions. And what you did was very, very bad. So, you're going to sit here in timeout until daddy tells you otherwise. So that you can learn that chewing up stuff that's not yours is bad. I bought, I bought you toys for a reason, cuz. Don't be licking me. Licking me ain't going to get you out of this. You should have chewed up your toys. You wouldn't be in this situation. Simple as that. I love you. But you still in timeout. That is a byproduct of man, what the fuck do these niggas be wrong when they see me? You know what I'm saying? Well, nigga. Here it is, nigga. I'm gonna call y'all bitch. You know why they made sidewalks? Why? Because the motherfucking streets ain't for everybody.
Would you say you being in your toxic relationships was your fault? Totally. Accountability is part of self-growth and part of healing. Of course, they were narcissistic, abusive, mentally, physically. But to be honest, did they show me that? From the beginning, they did. Did I stay? I stayed. So right now, I went from being a victim of theirs to being a victim of myself. So me staying and me accepting for so many years to waste my time, time is not refundable. To waste my time and my life and my energy and my health and my mental peace and choosing to stay with a person that already showed me red flags shows that there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And I've done the healing, I've done the work, it comes from childhood trauma, it comes from thinking that this is what love is and thinking that this energy of, a nar of narcissism is an energy that makes you feel home and that love is conditional and you have to sacrifice to be accepted and loved. So when I look back at my story, it makes me feel so sad that I did all what I did and I sacrificed everything. And I, Tracy, like if you hear what I've sacrificed, you would throw me off a building. <laughs> I sacrificed everything just to be loved and accepted. If you're not fed love on a silver spoon as a child, you will learn how to lick it off a knife.